Good afternoon and welcome to the show today. I'm Samson Olede. Promises to be another exciting edition of the show. And you can be rest assured that we have French Open um, highlights for you. Also talking about um, domestic football on the front, um, um, business news as well, among other things. But let's start from the home front, talking about the Nigerian Professional Football League. Um, you have March Day 31 taking place today. And um, for March Day 30, you had Rivers United running out 3-2 winners against Dakada United. Um, international, I beg your pardon, while Plato United were able to trash um, Rangers International by four goals to nil. So the title race is still between Rivers United and Plato United, and both teams are clashing when it comes to uh, match day 31. Remember the reverse fixture ended by a lone goal with River and um, Plato United winning that right there at home in just this time around. Um, it's R Rivers United who will be at home and Plato United have their work cut out um, when, when it comes to the match itself. The Adokia Amesia Maka Stadium in Port Harcourt will be the venue. 4 p.m. this evening, you can rest assured the best of football will be on display for the Nigerian Professional Football League. There you have the table on your screen, and um, it's Rivers United with a seven-point advantage over Plato United. Plato United cannot afford to lose. A loss would definitely set them back to 10 points in the title race, and that would all but signal um, Rivers United being champions elect but it's still a seven point game at this point a win for Plato United will reduce it to four points and that means game on because four points is just two games and um, you never can tell what it is it's eight games left in the Nigerian Professional Football League we have fixtures across um, you know the, the league this um, today and tomorrow and then um, we also have in the southwest the southwestern derby talking about three SC against um, Remo Stars that's also something to watch out for the reverse fixture it was Remo Stars who ran out winners let's see who gets this one this time around but all focus all attention will be at the Adokia Amasia Maka Stadium in Port by 4 p.m. as um, tabletop as Rivers United seek to go 10 points clear at the top of the summit against um, you know Plato United it should be interesting and um, intriguing hopefully the referee is not the center of attraction but rather the players and the quality of football on display will be the talking point when it comes to, um, you know, the Nigerian Professional Football League um, headliner between Rivers United and Plato United. Let's move away from there now and talk about European football. Yes, finally, the rescheduled match between Scotland and Ukraine, talking about the World Cup playoff, would take place today. Remember, they were meant to play on the 24th um, of March, but that match was um, postponed as a result of the invasion of Ukraine by Russia and um, though the war is still lingering in terms of um, the Russo-Ukrainian war, um, football has to go on in this regard because whoever wins this um, you know, clash would also determine World Cup spots. So um, it's Scotland taking on Ukraine at the Hamden Park and um, I'm sure this is a game that will be very emotional. We should expect um, you know, the football stars in unison also speaking out against the war even as the football world stands with Ukraine in terms of ensuring that there's peace in the Ukrainian nation and across um, the globe. So, Scotland against Ukraine, um, for the players, most of them have had a grilling season. Scotland captain Andrew Robertson of Liverpool, that's the left back, will definitely be leading the charge on this one. But it's yet to be seen how they're, they're able to pick up the performance considering um, the lengthy season they have, they've had, especially for Andrew Robertson who had to play all the matches with Liverpool. Remember, Liverpool played all finals that were at their disposal, also taking the Premier League battle down to the very last match of the season against Manchester City. So um, you should expect fatigue to come in at some point. For Scotland, um, they, they would definitely want to bank on home support to be able to carry them through. For Ukraine, it's yet to be seen how the players are um, in terms of physical fitness as well as um, you know peak performance. Remember, the Ukrainian um, domestic league has, um, was put on hold as a result of the war. And um, some of these players may just be rusty, but you never can tell. It's a game of football and it's what you can do over the course of 90 minutes. I'm sure um, they would also have um, several you know, fans across the globe supporting them when it comes to this match itself. So it's Scotland against Ukraine. May the best team win, as we say, in football. I'm still talking about the UEFA Nations League. Yes, the UEFA Nations League um, has started commences today. And um, we have Poland against Wales. That's another big clash that we should be expecting later this evening. And then um, for Poland, it's all about Robert Lewandowski in terms of bringing in the goals for them. Now for Robert Lewandowski, it must be said he has been enmeshed in um, transfer speculations all through 
the, the striker has insisted that he wants to leave Bayern Munich this season for um, another club, though Barcelona are said to be, um, is said to be the preferred destination. And um, reports have it that he has agreed a three-year deal with Barcelona, but Bayern Munich are still playing hardball in terms of letting their prized assets leave. So Robert Lewandowski, um, having scored 50 goals all through the season, will also be leading the charge for Poland against Wales. For the Welsh team, you have Gareth Bale back on the side. Gareth Bale battling with injuries, lack of playing time as well. Couldn't get a look in, in the Champions League final, though he was able to win his fifth UEFA Champions League title with Real Madrid and has left the club. So um, it's a clash of, um, on one hand, Poland with Robert Lewandowski, Bremen with confidence. On the other hand, Gareth Bale leading the Welsh team to ensure that they get victory over Poland at the United, um, UEFA Nations League opener. It's all to play for. Let's see who gets that when it comes to both sides you know, participating in this one. And um, it's time to talk about the Finalisma 2022, which is um, a contest between the Copa America champions as well as the European champions. So it's Como Ball against UEFA, if you want to call it that. I remember Argentina won the Copa America last time out, which marked um, Lionel Messi's first major trophy win on the international stage. Well, that's if you do not consider the Olympic gold medal he won in 2008 against um, our own dream team. Nigerian team. So um, it's Lionel Messi's Argentina who will be taking on um, Italy and the Finalisma and Wembley is the destination. This match definitely holds memories for both teams and um, for Italy especially um, they would be looking at some sort of um, you know resurgence having failed to qualify for the Qatar World Cup following um, the loss to North Macedonia in the World Cup semi-final playoff. So it's also playful for the Italians and they will be looking to you know, um, carry Giorgio Cellini on a high. Um, the, the, the Juventus defender will be, you know, um, retiring from national team football at the end of the match, which will take place later tonight. So um, it's, it's all to play for for Cellini. Let's see if he can end his national team appearances on a high. But Argentina definitely will be looking to coast home with another major trophy, even to cap off what has probably been a disappointing season for some of their players on personal notes, various club sites, especially Lionel Messi, who couldn't influence PSG to get to the latter stages of the UEFA Champions League and probably win it. Uh, Finalisma, Wembley is the venue. Let's see who gets this, really. Moving on from there now, let's delve into a bit of football stories. Ivan Perisic, yes, the Inter Milan, well, former now, the former Inter Milan midfielder has completed um, his signing to, or his, you know, transfer to Tottenham Hotspur in England. And it's on a two-year deal. Um, the financial details of the um, deal were not disclosed, but Antonio Conte has his man. That's his first signing when it comes to, um, you know, this transfer window. Remember, he was also able to get um, Rodrigo Bentaco as well as Dejan Kulusevski um, during the winter transfer window. So um, Conte um, trying to, you know, rally, um, bolster his squad and um, see if they can push for the title next season. For Perisic, um, he played uh, an instrumental role in Inter Milan's Coppa Italia win this season, though they couldn't defend their title successfully. And this isn't the first time the 33-year-old will be working with Antonio Conte, having worked with him at Inter Milan two seasons ago when Inter Milan won the Italian Serie A. So it's a reunion for both men, and um, Perisic definitely comes with a huge wealth of experience. Um, let's see how sports fare in that regard. Now, moving away from there, let's talk about some legal issues now. And um, it's about a Kotsuma. Yes, remember Kotsuma was in the news um, in the February, yeah, late February, um, regarding the treatment of um, his pets, cats in particular. And um, the, the video went viral and there were talks of, you know, stripping him, of um, banning him, you know, from playing football, among other things. Yes, last week, Tuesday, he faced um, a magistrate's court in terms for the first time um, having been slammed with about three charges of, um, you know, animal abuse under the Animal Welfare Act. And um, the man pleaded guilty to two of the offenses or two of the charges. And um, the latest about that ruling is that he has been given 180 hours of community service 
for kicking and slapping his pet. He has also been banned from keeping cats for the next five years. So um, uh, that, that's coming as um, some sort of um, you know, penalties that he has to pay for his actions. Now, um, as I said, he admitted to two offenses under the Animal Welfare Act. He's also to pay £8,000 for court costs including 12 months community order. So um, all of these are the um, fines or punishments for um, Kotsuma regarding the treatment he meted out to his um, cats. So there were, the video was there where he had to kick the cat, slap the cat, among other things. Now, he's not the only one who has been found guilty. His younger brother, Yuan, who plays for Dagenham as well as Redbridge, has also been, um, you know, fined as well, and he has been um, ordered to carry out 140 hours of community sentence um, service, rather, as well. Now, it must be said, Yuan, um, Kozuma's brother, was the one who, you know, recorded the whole incident and uploaded it on a Snapchat, where uh, he had about 80, you know, um, people on his profile who were following him. About five of them viewed it before the video was taken down. Unfortunately. Um, the video still went viral, and as a result, um, Yuan Zuma was found guilty of aiding and abetting um, the suffering of, you know, an animal. So there you have it, talking about Kozuma, as well as his brother, being punished for, you know, the actions they meted out to the pets. Again, it's, you know, it's calls for hum um, animal rights, that animals um, have lives and they should be treated as, um, as much as humans are in terms of care and protection. So... I'm sure Zuma has learned his lessons. He got dropped by Adidas in terms of his sponsor, got fined £250,000 by his club, West Ham United. And now, uh, with the court ruling, 180 hours of community service, £8,000 for cost, costs, among other things. I'm sure it will do better going forward. Let's delve into a bit of UEFA Champions League. Yes, it has ended last week, Saturday, Real Madrid are champions. But the latest is from UEFA. Karim Benzema has been named the UEFA Champions League player of the season. And I think that's not a surprise to many. The Frenchman was in um, outstanding form, scored 15 goals in 12 matches, um, leading Real Madrid to, you know, um, the title triumph. So um, it's quite deserving if you, you know, want to put it at that. Um, it's not just being named the UEFA Champions League player of the season. He's also part of the team of the season when it comes to um, the just-concluded UEFA Champions League. As a matter of fact, um, from the formation, is right there at the heart of the front line and there you have it on the screen um, you know accompanied by his teammate Vinicius Jr on the left hand side Kylian Mbappe on the right hand side the middle of the park had Fabinho of Liverpool Kevin De Bruyne of Manchester City and Luka Modric of Real Madrid and the defense line you had um, Trent Alexander-Arnold for Liverpool you have Rudiger you have Virgil van Dijk as well as Robertson and the goalkeeper is Thibaut Courtois. Um, that's not also up for debate considering his heroics in the Champions League final against Liverpool. So there you have it, the team of the season in terms of Europe. And um, I think um, very little, or few people rather, would have issues with this team. Um, just to chip this in as well, Vinicius Jr. Uh, was named the young player of the season. That's Real Madrid's Vinicius Jr. And that's well-deserving. Um, in the competition, he scored four goals and had six assists. Um, of the four goals he scored, the, probably the most important, un, un, arguably rather, the most important of those goals had to be the winning strike that won Real Madrid their 14th year for Champions League title. So, Vinicius Jr., the young player of the year, Karim Benzema, um, the player of the year, and both players also featuring in the first 11 of the um, UEFA Champions League this season.